Okay, so I always have a schedule of all the videos that I'm gonna post on YouTube. And I was planning to release my art book on October 1st and do some promotion. But since that shit got delayed until the middle of the month, I'm over here doing random tutorials for the views. <coughs> so today I'm gonna talk about how I shade traditional portraits. And I wanted to make sure that I put the word stylized in there. Because there's always gonna be that one nut job that's gonna be like, that doesn't look very realistic. So one of the things that triggers me the most in art I mean, pretty much everything triggers me, but probably the biggest thing is seeing how people shade with a pencil. And this is the usual type of shit that I see on Instagram. What the fuck is this bitch? And this is actually one of the old works from like six months ago of one of my Patreon students, Alexis. And this is what her work looks like right now. So trust me, I, I kind of know what the fuck I'm talking about. So the biggest problem with this shit is that people try to draw and shade at the same time. And they gotta realize it's a separate fucking thing. That would be like you trying to bake a cake and you put the whipped cream and the cherry on top before you even have the cake powder ready. Why do I always bring up fucking cake? So the biggest thing to realize is that you first need to build up the portrait with only lines, make sure that it has good proportions and structure, and then add the shading. And my favorite thing is when somebody says, yeah, but Da Vinci didn't do it that way. Well, bitch, are you fucking Da Vinci? Yeah, I thought so. So my process is, I always start out with what I call the lay-in, then I draw the features and planes, then I shade the shadows, and then finally I render out everything and I add details. And again, I'm not trying to draw a realistic fucking portrait. I just want to draw something that's gonna get a lot of likes on Instagram. But if that's not your style, that's totally okay even though it's not. And let's actually talk about some misleading information about pencil shading. There's this belief that when you're shading, you're supposed to constantly cross hatch, which means that you're doing these opposite lines and doing all these hashtags like you're trying to pop on Instagram. And there's some people who even do all this smudging with their finger, trying to blend everything like they're playing in their sandbox. I don't know which motherfucker taught you that shit, but I don't do none of that. And the smudging with the finger, beside it being fucking disgusting, that's exactly how you end up with a soft ass beginner fucking looking portrait all of your shading needs to be very deliberate there shouldn't be any like oh i don't know i i think this needs to be a little bit darker so i'm just gonna smudge some poop on it and the cross hatching is not entirely wrong but you can't expect that you're just gonna cover the face with all these random hashtags like a 11 year old girl trying to get attention on instagram and expect it to look good as i've told you a million times on this channel the problem comes from you not understanding structure so when people look at a reference, they're like, oh, this needs to be a little bit darker and this needs to be a little bit lighter. And that's exactly how you end up with a blurry poop. That's why I keep telling you about the planes of the head. And of course, nobody really listens to me. So let's pretend that you actually understand the planes of the head. So when you have a plane, it has two different sides, this side and this side. And when I'm shading, I choose one of these sides and I shade only this way. When I've established the shadows and the basic shading, I might go the opposite direction of the plane just to exaggerate the form but you can't just go some random fucking direction because you feel like it so that's why if you don't understand the planes and you're just doing some random shading and your little smudging you're just wasting time i'm sorry maybe that's just your style so now let's talk about bows baby so this is a simple breakdown of my shading process with a pencil i start out with a line art and this is where you really figure out all of the proportions and make sure that everything is right i see so many Many people get all the way up to this stage and then they start erasing and fixing things. Well, bitch, what were you doing in stage one? Poking your nose? Then I figure out all of the current drop shadows. I've done some tutorials about that, but those two are really gonna show the form of your object. And it's a really important stage that I think a lot of people skip. Like they just start doing their goofy smudging. Like you first need to figure out where your shadows are gonna be before you shade them. Then stage three, I separate the light from the dark and I fill the shadows with tone. Now when you're filling the shadows, you need to be holding your pencil like this and using the broad side of the tip to really get this seamless shading. And I swear if only another motherfucker asked me about what brand of pencils to buy. So this is a 2mm mechanical pencil, 2B, 
or not to be and I use it for pretty much 90% of my process and in the first stage I'm holding my pencil like this and I'm drawing from the shoulder and I have it at about 70% angle not like this and not like this I told you before this is not a fucking writing class you don't hold your pencil like this you're not trying to write a fucking essay then for the core shadow I go even lower and I use this type of strokes going from big to small then for the shadows you really need the long tip so I almost lay it out flat and I do this shit all oh, these sounds six and then we have mid tones and direction and this is really where I start shading all of the transitions and all of the planes that are not gonna be in shadow and you might be thinking but angel that's a ball it doesn't have any planes wrong bitch everything has planes so even if the object is round you still have to imagine all these 3d planes so you can navigate yourself and really show the form of the ball through your strokes because what else are you gonna do your shitty smudging of course I'm not saying that you need to turn round objects into fucking Rubik's Cube and shit just try to imagine the bow as if it's a low poly object and the funny thing is that when you get good at drawing you start seeing everything in plain so you don't even need to draw or think about it and beginners look at the way advanced people are drawing and they're like I can draw without plain still and an important thing is that when I have a big shadow shape, I might shade the whole thing in only one direction because it makes it more unified. And then afterwards, you can add more layers to really build up all of the planes. But when you're doing mid-tones, you're not really gonna go a couple of times on top of that because it's actually gonna get too dark. So when you're doing mid-tones right from the start, you need to establish the direction of the plane. So again, with shadows, you can shade in only one direction to make it more uniform. And then afterwards, you can build it up. But with mid-tones, right from from the beginning you need to establish all of the planes and then we have the final stage rendering and line weight so in stage four I've already established all of the core shadows the direction of planes mid-tones all of that shit so in the final stage I just further develop what I already have so I don't try to draw anything new here the information is already there I just make things darker and I clarify the shading and at this stage I might switch to the 0.5 2b mechanical pencil oh yeah but what brand is it and when rendering in line weight I'm finally holding the pencil like a normal human being because I'm going for this small and clear stroke and the problem is that beginners look at this final stage and they try to copy all the little details and the little brush strokes but they don't understand all of the stages that come before that also you might notice that I use a different direction for the core shadow and the shading of the shadow itself so for the core shadows I like to use the two millimeter pencil and really draw it with these broad strokes because it gives you this very natural and grimy texture but for the rendering of the transition and the shadow shape, I almost always use the 0.5 because it gives you these tiny strokes and they give you the illusion of detail. Another thing that I do in this stage is I go on top of my line art and I start building the line weight. And this is different from my digital process because in digital painting, I always build the line weight first and then I shade. But in traditional, the line weight is almost a part of the shading. And if you don't even know what line weight is, congratulations. That means you're new to my fucking channel. Another thing that I don't do is I don't do backgrounds in traditional. Some people try to shade the background so they can object and stand out, but in my opinion, that looks messy as shit. This is not fucking painting. I don't want it to look realistic. I just want it to look pretty and clean, like me. I'm actually pretty dirty. So I always leave the background white in my portraits and I just draw thicker outlines so they can stand out. Now let's talk about what to look for in a reference when drawing traditionally. Cause boy, if there's one thing people don't understand, is how to choose a goddamn reference. So when I'm painting digitally, I use all types of different references because there I have color and light, I have highlights, I can change things around, but in pencil drawing, you're very limited. And if you don't have the right reference, you're gonna end up with Mr. Smudged Face over here. So the biggest thing that I look for in a traditional reference is to have as many drop and core shadows as possible because again, that's really what's gonna show the 3D form of the portrait. So if you look at this photo, even though I think it's a great reference I actually did a digital painting of it I don't think it's gonna be good for traditional because there's too much mid-tones and highlights when painting digitally it's much easier to show all these highlights and mid-tones but in traditional the main source of form is gonna come through the shadows and you can't really do this with this reference
reference or I guess I can't. Now on the other hand if you look at this reference even though it might look flat as hell there's a great opportunity to push this cheekbone with a core shadow right here to add a drop shadow below the nose to push the core shadow of the nose and to even add this rim light on the edge and all of that is only gonna add to the 3d form of the portrait so in reality when I'm drawing traditionally I use the reference for the proportions and the features but when it comes to the shading I really design all of the shadows myself and I only use the reference as inspiration and if you look at my old work I think that was my biggest problem I wasn't using the right reference and I wasn't thinking about structure and shadows and I was just trying to copy the photo and again when you get good you can use any goddamn reference and it's still gonna look pretty hot but when you're first starting out you need to be very picky with your references so now let me show you what I see when I look at the reference I see planes so you have to study these planes until they become second nature to you and then when I'm drawing stylized women I'm only simplifying them and using only the ones that I need because what is she gonna have a Bermuda triangle on her cheek so this is what happens to my brain when I look at the reference this is the 3d form breakdown that I'm seeing and when you start using this you realize that shading is no longer guessing it's not like oh this needs to be a little bit darker so I'm gonna smudge it it's only about how do I represent this 3d plane and I think a misunderstanding that a lot of people have is that you're supposed to show every single little transition of every plane and that's not the case actually that's just gonna make your portrait look like it has a bunch of scars so what I do is I use a combination of the planes mixed with some of the shadow shapes that I'm seeing to really design my own shapes and I love how people think this is fucking art and creativity it's fucking not it's just a simple breakdown that comes from you studying all of the forms in the face now another thing you need to understand is edges and I'm gonna do a whole separate video about this because it's a pretty big subject but for now you just need to understand a hard edge a firm edge and a soft edge so everything that you see with red is a drop shadow or what people call a cast shadow but I like a drop better that means that it's being casted from another object so for example here the hair is casting a shadow onto the forehead the nose is casting a shadow onto the cheek and if she had a dildo on her forehead that will be casting a shadow too and for a drop shadow you need to be using the hardest edge possible because that's really gonna show the form of the object that you're shading then everything you see with blue is a core shadow that comes from the form of the object actually turning around and I still use a pretty hard edge but not as hard as the drop shadow so if you look at a forehead a beginner might see light going to dark and they might be like yeah it's smudging time but what I see is first this plain breakdown that I show you and then I notice the shadow shape and how it's going around the border of the planes and I exaggerate the edges so I can show the form better so a hard edge right here for this drop shadow and then a firm edge right here for the core shadow so that's my whole process for stage two I just figure out all of the drop and core shadows and I map them out before I start shading and then when I start doing the mid-tones I'm still following the planes I'm just being a lot more gentle with my shading so if you look at the side of the face this is going this way and then this is going this way and then this is going this way and I'm going to the highway I also try to simplify as much as possible like you see this darkness right here next to the nose I don't shade that because I know it's gonna lead to the muddy poop effect so I only add shading if it's gonna help the form and the aesthetic of the piece I don't add shading because that's how it is in the reference fuck the reference and here's a time-lapse video of me drawing this portrait first establishing all of the proportions and pose then drawing all of the features and important planes then mapping out all of the core and drop shadows feeling out all of the shadows and then I'm going over on top of my lines to create some line weight and finally adding details and rendering and this is what I end up with and then after some magic liquefying and flipping in Photoshop this is the final result <laughs> god damn I'm fucking good I've also created this free PDF for you that covers everything that I talked about in this video and you can download it for free from the description also final piece of advice don't listen to all these goofy artists that are always like yeah man I just go to a cafe and I sketch without really thinking yeah I can tell you didn't really think fuck mindless sketching and fuck a cafe you just sit down and you study this shit like it's goddamn science this is not fucking art also please go to my website and enter your email because I'm releasing an art book in two weeks and nobody has signed up yet and I'm afraid I'm not gonna sell a single book so check the description for the PDF and go to aganif.com to get notified about my book so this is it for today um stay positive and don't be angry you know nobody's angry around here I am beautiful